everybody, it's Keith O here, and today I've got the one and only Suzanne Jackson from So Sue Me. Suzanne, how are you? I'm good, Keith. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to, to do this interview. I've never actually had a one-on-one with, one -on -one with you before, so yeah, I'm kind of intrigued. And it's been a few years since we've chatted, so look, we're going to have a chat. Yeah. There'll be a few brain hacks along the way as well. Um, you know, you're known as an influencer. You're known uh, you know, for your fashion. You're known for your branding, so sue me. Um, but I'm really interested in the hard work that goes on behind the scenes, the cogs that turn those wheels. So tell me, what... Uh, like people ask you know what's your average working day and i'm going to guess you're kind of like me that you don't have an average working day but i am going to ask you like how many hours do you av on average put in per day into work uh, my husband would say 24 7. yeah i never switch off and i suppose that's one of my weaknesses is that i actually don't know when to switch off because i'm just so passionate about what i do and i suppose when you love what you do it's never really a job i'm sure you're like the same yeah. yourself you just love it. I like eat, breathe and sleep what I do. But like no day is ever the same. No, absolutely not. But I suppose I'm working day. I get up in the morning. I'll check my emails. I'll do a couple of Zooms with the staff and kind of like look at what the plan is for the week of the month ahead. And then I could be onto my buying team then talking about products, sampling, or getting a lot of packages to the house because obviously we have to sample products. That's how we yeah. create products. So I've got to sample everything all the time and then obviously feedback my, my feedback to my team. Then also we're launching stuff all the time. So I have to do all the approvals for social media, for graphics, for web, and then I have to market it. So there's a lot involved in one day. And then as well as that, there's all the boring business stuff, accounts yeah. and payroll and bonuses and all the business side of things, the ugly stuff. Well, this is really interesting to me because a lot of people wouldn't realize that somebody like you, because you're the front of the brand, you're out there all the time, but a lot of people don't realize, you've mentioned it already, that there's a big team behind you. So how big yeah. is your team? Oh, God. All, all in all, when, all in all, when we're in the office, yeah, yeah. Uh, 15, about 15 to 20 people. Wow. Um, no, I'm even surprised at that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to stop you there because even a couple of years ago, you know, when my team was kind of expanded when I was on the road, you know, I would never even have that amount myself. So that's amazing for me to know that, you know, a brand such as yourself has like a team of... 15 people uh, helping yeah. you with different aspects of your business. So tell us a little yeah. bit about what they do. So we have different departments. We obviously have accounting and finance department that look after the money. <laughs> yeah. Then we move on then down to the marketing department. So we've got like a mix of a marketing, digital marketing manager there that would look after all everything digital because obviously we're moving more and more and more into digital. Yeah. We have like social media executives. We have influencer um, executives. They look after all the influencers and the briefing to do with influencers. As you know, it works, influencer yeah, yeah. marketing. Um, and then we move over then to uh, design. We've got two graphic designers full time. And then we move into the buying departments. They, they create the product with me. Then we move down into the warehouse and we've got like warehouse operatives. Then we move over to the online sales. So we have all our packers and our warehouse ops there. And God, there's, there's so much. Then we also have like distribution. We have sales, we have a sales department. So it, 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 it's a full functioning company. And I suppose you need to have people behind you if you want to go global and if you want to make good dollar, you have to have a good team there. And you also have to produce good product and have a good audience, which I think so super Suzanne Jackson has. So I'm very proud of it, but it is obviously hard work. And I do think people don't realize that, you know? Well, um, well this is important for anybody out there who perhaps is a content creator or an influencer, uh, you know, or somebody who's even been at it a couple of years, they don't realize that probably at the start, you know, you probably invested a lot of time, effort, energy, resources, and money when you didn't really know where the journey was going. Uh, so yeah. when you started out, was it just you on your own when you started out, or did you have one or two people already pre-existing that helped you? Uh, I started out on my own. Um, I actually was approached by a distributor who is actually my business partner now, Fran from Sundaral is his name. And basically he approached me and said, look, I see you're doing a great job in the blog in front. And I always wanted to create product because I was a beautician first and foremost before I went into the blogging uh, world. Yeah. And he said to me, I see you're doing like a really good thing. You know, you've got a good following. Would you ever have thought of creating product? And I was like, actually, yeah, I, but I just don't know how to go about it. So he kind of took me under his wing and we went into it together. We invested the same amount of money. Sometimes I read articles people are like he invested everything and she and he's every she's everything goes ahead no we went into a 50 50 together he put money in i put money in the same amount and we just went for it um we, we trialed it with the nail polish collection actually a 25 range of colors of nail polishes and we did year one sales in something like nine weeks or something so it was incredible right. so then myself and fran then both said right let's just throw the kitchen sink at it and go full steam and we did and 
the thing about me is I'm a very good marketeer. I know how to, uh, marketing is what sells at the end of the day. Yeah. And I'm very good at that because I'm honest. And I do think sometimes honesty sells. So like, I'm very, very critical of my own product when I need to be. I listen to constructive feedback and I know how to, pro I know how to wear and sell my product because I've developed it. But um, yeah, no, we're very lucky in the sense that we have a very good following and I have a very good business partner. And then from the back of that, then I set up a business with my husband, which is the tanning side of things. Okay. So myself and Dylan went into the, the dripping gold end. So I've got two companies uh, in, in the product world. And then I have another company, which is Sosumi, <laughs> which is my <laughs> blogging world. And then I have other businesses, asset companies. And all my, companies come out of my ears, but it's all good. But I think this is brilliant for people to hear like that, you know, when people are aspiring uh, towards being somebody like yourself or being influenced by somebody like yourself and maybe wanting to be in that world that they don't need to understand, you know, you have to put your own money in, you have to put your money in, in yourself. It wasn't somebody yeah. else backing you. And then obviously you met Fran and Fran went 50, 50 with you. Now here's a little secret you probably don't know about me. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to drop a bomb right in the middle here. And actually okay. most, most of the viewers won't know this about me. And I like to share stories of myself that some people don't know. I'm actually a cosmetic scientist by trade. I used to invent what? women's makeup, right? I, I, yeah, yeah, I know it's nuts. So I actually had uh, a range of products, a full uh, men's range for Oriflame. I don't know if you know Oriflame. They're a Swedish yeah. cosmetics company. Um, so they're predominantly big in kind of South America, uh, but they're based out of Sweden. So at 23, I used to look after full scale production in Poland for Oriflame. So I was the guy inventing all my own men's wear range, like creams and emulsions. I actually invented a biphasic eye makeup remover. Oh my God. Um, I'm going to be like, going, do you want a little job on the side? Yeah, yeah, you might call <laughs> me afterwards. So yeah, I know a little bit about it. So, uh, and weirdly enough, uh, this is kind of interesting actually. When I was over there, I do remember, uh, you know, because I'm from the world of deception, obviously, I, I remember standing over like a five ton batch of a cream with, with a pipette full of aloe vera <laughs> and dropping in like five drops of aloe vera so that marketing put on could put on the front label, uh, you know, aloe vera, youthful and all the rest of it. Um, but I, I found out having put on, because obviously there's no animal testing and rightly so, we know that, but I, I used to have to test my own eye makeup remover on myself. So I'd be putting on mascara and wiping it off. So I realized, I realized after a couple of years doing that though, that it wasn't for me. Now look, okay. we mentioned free, that you're obviously an influencer. That's, That's how you, Yeah, thanks. You know, it's kind of That's interesting. That's real. Oh my God, you're after shocking me now. I know. Um, That's brilliant. But obviously, look, we know you're still an influencer. I know you started out an influencer yeah. and you do a lot more as well, but I'm going to try and influence you right now, okay? So okay. I've got a piece of paper here. I'm going to write something down on this piece of paper. Let's see, Suzanne will say, okay, I'll influence Suzanne to say, okay, and done. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I've written something down on this and I'm purposely not showing you, so I'm just going to fold it up a couple of times like so. And like okay. so. Now I'm going to keep this in full view. I've got an envelope here. Nothing inside the envelope. I'm going to just pop that inside there. Okay. And I'll close okay. that down. Yeah. And I'll leave it there like that. So perfect. Okay. So you leave that there. Now, here's the idea. I'm going to try and influence you. I'm going to say a couple of words. This is a game of word disassociation. So in other words, a word of, uh, game of word association would be, if I said apple, you might say orange. This is yeah. a game of word disassociation. So for example, if I said apple, you might say, I don't know, like uh, Miami or something random. Okay. So in other words, don't be influenced by what I say. I'm going to say three words to you. And then after I say those three words, you're going to name a single word out loud. So let's see. I'm going to say tanning pizza bananas name a word bicycle say again a bicycle a bicycle i thought you said icicle there so i'm a little bit relieved they didn't say uh icicle but you said bicycle bicycle so, so do you think it was possible that i influenced you to say the word bicycle by the three words that i said initially do you think that's possible at all no no. Now, if you were here, obviously you would have been holding on to this envelope, okay, and you could have examined it and all the rest, but you would open it up yourself. But you're not here, so I'm going to have to do that for you. But fingertip stuff, and obviously I'm not wearing any sleeves, so you can see there's nothing in my hands, okay? I'm going to open yeah. this up. You can still see the piece of paper there, hopefully. If I get in there, you can see that. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. So if you were here, you would take it out, but I have to take it out for you. So there it is there. And I'm just going to open this up, and I want you to read out loud, please, exactly what it says. 
I will influence Suzanne to say, fuck off. <laughs> you see, influence is all around us, Suzanne. Oh my God. Key, how? I don't even say the word bicycle, I say bike. So how did you get me to say bicycle? I know, right? You normally say bike, not bicycle, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I when I said bicycle, I was like, why did I just say bicycle? I know. I never said bicycle. <laughs> okay, that is unbelievable. Right? You're blowing my mind now. I'm influencing the influencer. So tell me this. Did, did you have or do you currently have any mentors, either in business or just in life in general? Um, I don't have any official mentors, but like I would always turn to people that I really value their opinion. So I would always turn to like my business partner who's been in business for quite a long time. He's got some really good experience kind of racked up over the years. So he'd be quite influential in my way of thinking. Um, my mom and dad, obviously, yeah. you can't beat your own mother's advice. I'm and, the same. Uh, yeah, yeah. They kind of the, the blunt friend. I always go to the really blunt friend who's Doreen and I'll ask her her advice and she's she gives me her honest answer, I suppose. And then the team, my team are my mentors as well. Like they have their own ideas. They're listening to the the uh, customers all the time in customer service. I've got about the customer service department as well. <laughs> That's another department. But um, but yeah, now I, I kind of listen to people around me, but at the same time, people that aren't telling me what I want to hear, you know? Well, that's great. And tell me this, when you listen to some of the negative comments, perhaps that come online, and I get a lot of it as well, okay? So for example, yeah. I've gotten death threats in the past from like predictions that I've made about sporting events that haven't come true. And then all of a sudden I get these death threats from people who bet on the, the outcome yeah. of the sporting prediction. So look, I'm used to getting negative stuff online. And at this stage in my life, I think it's just worldly experience. I'm 44, I've been around a long time now. It is water if it ducks back at this stage, like it really is. Um, just how do you uh, find that experience when you do get those negative mm -hmm. comments does it affect you or are you kind of over it at this stage i'm over it at this stage and i know that right. that sounds probably a little bit cliche or a little bit like i'm not being honest genuinely as long as i'm not affecting other people and the lives of other people and you know i'm doing the best i can do well then i'm not doing anything wrong you know and yeah. i suppose i don't listen to it no i have i do read it from time to time if it's yeah. if it's posted on my page or if somebody sends me something I'll, you know, I'll, I'll read it, but like, I don't get consumed by it and I don't let the opinions of others influence me when they don't even know who I am or yeah. kind of like, kind of, I, I feel with the younger generation, they're letting these people's opinions get into their heads and they're kind of believing it where I just don't. And I suppose that does come with experience. Like I'm, I'm only in the industry 10 years, not as long as you, but I suppose as I would have gotten a lot of hate, probably the most over the years in terms yeah. of influences because I was the first but no it doesn't bother me anymore and sometimes if it's constructive I will actually take something from it and go okay well then maybe I could go approach it that way or yeah. you know especially if it's around product but you know for the most part I just let it go well, well just on that note like I know you're on Instagram and I follow you on Instagram um but are you on all of the other platforms as well or is it just Instagram like are you on Twitter for example yeah, I'm on Twitter. Don't use Twitter as much because sometimes I used to find that a very negative space mm -hmm. when I was first blogging. Like, it's very opinionated, yep. Twitter. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I don't like getting into debates, so I just stay out. But no, I haven't. I kind of engage a little bit on Twitter. Facebook, obviously, is still there. That's how I started. Um, Instagram. And then TikTok now is the new one that I'd be I'd be into even though I'm 30 nearly 37 I really shouldn't be <laughs> but yeah. I absolutely love it yeah, see I'm in my 40s and I still haven't embraced TikTok yet now that's not to say that I won't I do have a TikTok account yeah. I haven't posted there in weeks and weeks I prefer the long form format as I was saying off yeah. air you know and uh what's uh, what I'd love some advice about so my wife follows you I know some other uh ladies that follow you but listen us men, we need some fashion tips. And I know that you know what's going on in fashion <laughs> all around the world. Tell me, what are the top tips for men for 2021 with fashion? 2021, well, it's very much the 70s vibe is here, would you believe? As you can tell by my Farah hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, no, 70s is in, but not everybody can wear that. But I'm noticing on your t-shirt, you've got a bit of neon going on. Neon yeah. is here for 2021. Well, that's good like to know. Yeah, I've got pink, it matches your, your top. And <laughs> um, a lot of like wide fitting pants, that not everybody would embrace, but like wide legged trousers are in. Also like cool little bomber jackets. The shacket is kind of like the shirt with the jacket. Yeah. Okay, Did but hang on, whoa, 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 I have to stop. What's a shacket? Explain the that. Shacket. Okay, so the shacket is like a very effortless kind of formal 
jacket. It's just a little bit more than like your your duffel coat, say. Okay. So it's like a shirt, but it's also like a little jacket. So it's kind of military style. Oh, like Do you that. know what it's kind of like the style for 2021? It's military meets a farmer. I swear to God, that's what's <laughs> happening. It's that type of pockets and uh, real kind of like field kind of esque vibes. Well, I, I, but, like, I'll tell you, that, that, that'll suit me perfectly because this. <laughs> Uh, you know, aside from the pandemic, when the pandemic isn't here, all I love doing is gardening. Believe it or not, I've got green fingers. So I like I've got loads of <laughs> when I say gardening, not flowers. I love growing my own vegetables. So that's the farmer in me. Ah, oh. like an allotment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I just do it in the back garden in containers. So I don't even have wow. an allotment. Just loads of containers in the back garden. I've quite, got quite a small back garden to do it in. Um, yeah. But then I also love fishing and I love going to the forest with the kids. So it sounds like this yeah. is the kind of style that I would like as well. Yeah. Today, you, know? you can definitely rock the style. I'll send you a few links after. But yeah, look, at the end of the day, though, fashion is all about what makes you feel good about your yourself and what you're comfortable in and I also think as well after this this whole pandemic crisis everything that's gone on just getting dressed getting up in the mornings putting on your best gear getting out for a walk you know don't keep it for when the pandemic lifts just dress up and feel good about yourself even yeah. that means like nice lick of gel in the hair or a shave keep on top of feeling good about yourself because how you feel about yourself predominantly has such an effect on everything around you then you know how you are as a person how you rub off on other people and stuff not that we're but, rubbing off on anyone these days but that's interesting that you, you mentioned that though so you know how you feel about yourself so do you practice any form of like mindfulness or meditation or creative visualization some people don't um i do i practice creative visualization i also practice self-hypnosis which is kind of a cousin if you like of meditation do you practice anything like that yeah i'd be big into this now i was hypnotized before you know this yeah by me hypnotized by you <laughs> yes once and i actually went to a couple of sessions from hypnotherapy um do you remember paul golding yeah, no, I know. I remember him very well. Yeah, yeah, I was friends yeah. with him before he passed away. Yeah. A great man. And I re remember actually when I first started getting a lot of hate back uh, when I first started blogging. God, it must be nearly eight, nine years ago now. And I really just couldn't deal with it. I actually went to some hypnotherapy to try and, I don't know what they did, but they trained my yeah. mind to try and block it out or whatever. But no, I'm big into hypnotherapy. I'm big into uh, visualization. So like I almost like my home that myself and Dylan bought here, I would have visualized this. Yeah. Like years ago the smell how i see things like i'd be very much a visual person very creative mind and i would do a little bit of meditation i try and do 20 minutes a day now it's not right. always achievable but yeah. i do think when i slow my mind down like any kind of real creative person like yourself and myself we need to slow our minds down yeah. so i would do a little bit of that and i'm a big a big fan of like what you put out you get back like you know law of attraction yeah things like that so i could talk about this stuff all day long <laughs> But this is brilliant because you see, this is the stuff that perhaps ordinarily we wouldn't hear from somebody like you. No. And what's coming out of my series is, you know, Rory Best talked about it, Keith Earls talked about it, uh, Ellen Keane. They all creatively visualize in their own way, of course. Um, and it's interesting you mentioned Paul Golden. Paul was actually one of my mentors. Um, wow. In addition to Tony Sadar, and Tony is still going as a as a hypnotherapist. Tony's well in the seventies now, but my God, these people—they're amazing mentors. Um, and for me, it's so important to hear that from somebody like yourself that you visualize yeah. things, you believe in the law of attraction. But ultimately, I can see, and from what we've spoken about, that you follow it up with massive action because the law yeah. of attraction won't work if you just sit at home and visualize the house that you're in, or the cabin that I'm in, or whatever it is that you want in life. Um, yeah. You know, you can't just sit there and attract it. You have to visualize it attract it but then go about the business of attaining that so with that being said do you set goals for yourself like specific goals yeah yeah every year every 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 single january for god as long as i can remember i sit down i write down my goals and i also feel like that's a form of mindfulness where you're writing down things because even if i need to learn something off like back in school or something where i have like a, a big interview i will actually learn off my answers yeah you know because you, you don't want to get especially something big like national television like the late late show things like that i would learn off my answers because yeah. you don't want to put your foot in it <laughs> and i have a habit of putting my foot in it oh um, same here but, all the time yeah I'm just too flippant. I'll say fuck or something and then <laughs> yeah. rhyme and have a heart attack. You know? I know. I've gotten into but, loads of trouble on the late eight show over the years. I won't get into it here. Oh my God. Yeah. But like you, I've started to rehearse now. Yeah. So I'm rehearsing now, but no, I like to write them down. And then I like to actually then, as you say, action them. And I feel like if you write them down, you nearly kind of have to put a little action yeah. plan into place. And like, I do believe in short-term goals and long-term goals. I always say to people that I would do like talks to over the years, don't, don't say I want to be a millionaire in a year because you're not going to yeah. be, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But to say to yourself, I'm going to do 10,000 steps by, by May and you can build your way up to that. So always like 
little goals because they motivate you and they keep you going. But yeah, no, I'd be a big fan of writing my goals down. I actually only found my mother bought me a wishing jar back in 2013 with little yep. fairies because I also believe in the paranormal, which we'll probably talk about no we'll doubt. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she said, like, you write down on a piece of paper, you put it into the wishing jar. And I only found the wishing jar uh, two days ago. And there was like my note from 2013 saying that I want to success with my blog and I wanted to create a product range. And I sent it to my mom and dad and they were like, oh, my God. So, you know, there is a little bit of a build something out there if you write it down and you work hard. No, but I love that, though, because I think by writing it down, neurologically, your brain makes a shift. And people don't understand, you know, you, you write your goals down, but you're creating new neural pathways every moment of every day. And they say that nerves that wire together, fire together, and nerves that fire together, wire together. And by writing it down, you immediately start to fire up those neurons in your brain yeah. that would ultimately help you move towards your goals and your dreams. So you mentioned the paranormal there. Have you ever had a paranormal experience? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Go ahead. You. I actually have been approached while I'm in talks with TV shows to a paranormal TV oh, wow. show. And I'm going to drag you into it some way. Oh, I love form. that. Yeah, yeah, I'm all yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, I have, yeah, like, all, all my life. All my life, yeah. I, I don't want to get too weird. <laughs> but, give one ex have you got one example you can share? Uh, okay, so this would be paranormal to me. So I was very, very young and my father used to be a fireman. So he used to get calls during the night. His bleeper, bleeper used to go off and he used to have to go up and down the stairs. I used to always remember hearing his footprints going up and down the stairs. And I'd be like, oh, that's just my dad going out to a fire. Yeah. So one night I heard the stamps going up and down, but I kept going up and down the stairs. It's like, why the fuck is he going up and down, up and down? Normally he just boosted down the stairs and goes. Yeah. So very bizarre, but they were very loud footsteps. So I just kind of thought it's my dad. Turned back on my side, woke up the next morning and my granddad had passed away. And yeah. I was like, wow, that was just weird so when I start looking into it then it said that it could be like I don't know there was loads of different things but that was paranormal to me because my, oh and my dad said he wasn't on a call he said he didn't go up and down the stairs yeah. but I was awake hearing this like I could actually hear it so I don't know there's been a few things well I've already shared this story but very briefly for any of you who didn't hear it I had a similar experience to you not the same but similar so my grandfather on my mum's side he'd been in hospital for like a couple of weeks and uh, I remember being fast asleep. So I was the opposite of you. I was in a deep sleep and I woke up one night and when I woke up, there was tears streaming down my face. So I'd been crying in my sleep and I sat up in the bed and in my head, I went, oh, we used to call him Gaga. So I said, oh, Gaga's dead. And then I just went back asleep. And then I woke up the next morning and my mom came in crying and went, you know, Gaga passed away last night. And I said, oh, I do know. Yeah. And, and I said, I looked at the clock last night. I bet you he died at uh, 10 past one. And she was like, how do you know? I said, and I told her the story and she was freaked out. And here's the weird thing. I've never cried in my sleep before that. And I never cried after that. Um, wow. I know, of course, I'm the ultimate skeptic because of what I do, right? So I'm always looking into the theory and the science behind it all. But that is the one moment in my life where I just can't explain it. There is no explanation for it, right? So I'm kind of, uh, the, you know, I like the, the concept of that was maybe a peek behind the window from even me, the kind of ultimate skeptic. You know, I've had some other paranormal experiences. Here's one I didn't share. OK, so here's one uh, that's going to be original to our viewers. Uh, okay. I, was working, I was working on a show of mine called The Dark Side. So it was a stage show. It was based around Alistair Crowley, who was known as kind of the wickedest man who ever lived. He lived on the banks of Loch Ness. So ultimately, um, when I was researching Alistair Crowley and the show, I, I had the house covered in like Ouija boards and books on the dark side and stuff. And Raid wasn't really too happy about this, of course. Uh, and Brianna, our daughter, she was probably like one at the time. So we had all these kind of little stuffed kids toys everywhere. Uh, and you know, the ones that have batteries in them that ultimately, yeah. you know, walk Make noise and all. Yeah, so I was sitting in the front living room one time and I was messing around with a Ouija board, as you do, you know? So I'm sitting there messing around with this Ouija board and I'd been in the front living room for, I don't know, two hours, we'll say. Um, and the next minute when I was like, is there a spirit present? One of Brianna, now I'd been in there two hours, right? And nothing had happened. Uh, but when I said that, one of Brianna's toys kind of came alive, if you like, and just walked across the floor, like when these little Oh my eyes, God. You know, and I was like, oh, that's kind of spooky. And then that same night I went into my office and I was kind of doing some research and two Alistair Crowley books 
fell off the bookshelf. Now I have a massive bookshelf uh, with loads of books. Two of his books fell off. And then I was kind of a bit spooked. And then finally, uh, I had a blow heater. It was winter time and I was, had a blow heater in the room. And I remember specifically, and I'm really good at safety. So I remember specifically turning the blow heater off when I went to bed. But the next morning I got, got up, I went down, I opened up the door to my office and it was obvious that the blow heater had been on all night long. It was like roasting in there. And I specifically remember turning it off. Turning so it off. Yeah, but some people might think, oh, maybe you thought you turned it off. But here's the weird thing. When I walked in, when I walked into my office, the red light that was showing, so the red light would always show when it's on, right? When yeah. I walked in, the red light went off, right? And it would never no go off on its own. Like, there's no way this thing would go off. It's not like a, a thermostat. It's like a red light to show that it's on. And it turned yeah. off. And then when I went down, the off button was off. So... They're my kind of paranormal oh. experience. But again, I've never shared those with anybody. So this is like, as wow. I said, kind of a sharing experience. Um, yeah. I don't want to hold you up too long. Tell me this. Oh, have, you, amazing. have you any fears? Is there anything that you fear in life? Yeah, I have fears. I don't give them too much time. But obviously my fear would be that anything was, would happen to my family with their health or anything like yeah. that. that. That would be a fear for me, I suppose. But in terms of just like spiders and things like that no no nothing like that i actually would love to go on i'm a celebrity get me out of here not that i'm classed myself as a celebrity the irish have a way of going hang on you're not a celebrity but like something like that because i love all that creepy quality type thing but no no real fears i suppose i don't give that type of stuff much thought you but that's know? good though i like that's good again <laughs> for our viewers is that you kind of eliminate uh, those self-doubts and those fears because if you learn to shrink those down as i put it and magnify yeah. the positive in life you can keep those yeah. at bay those fears uh, and yeah. any of those things that perhaps could be detrimental to your uh, mental health um yeah. finally what do you do to escape what does suzanne jackson do to escape <laughs> the online world and the craziness of hair and makeup and all the things <laughs> you love but how do you escape it all how do you just get away from it all Honestly, it's very simple. I have a bath. I love a bath. And I just turn my phone airplane mode and I light my candles and I just zone out. Or I bring my dogs on a nice walk and leave my phone at home. For me, how I zone out is I just put my phone down because that's the world that just, you know yourself, once you start scrolling or you get back to emails, yeah. you're just in, it's like, oh, six o'clock. So yeah. I just put my phone down and it's the best thing. Just put your phone down and set like a little like um, timer for yourself on your phone to just shut you out of your apps at a certain time in the evenings. Yeah. And I just try and just get out into the fresh air. I love nature. I love like going to like forests and I love like nice walks. So yeah. just go with my dogs and Dylan sometimes and just sometimes I even put like a nice podcast in my ears. And I just if I do have my phone on airplane mode and have a podcast saved down, I like podcasts. I like listening to they, they actually will be mentors coming back to your other question i like to listen to other people that have gone through similar business experiences but um yeah i just like getting out and to the fresh air well i think you've touched on something very important actually uh and you might not even know it so i always say to people surround yourself by thought leaders both in your field and outside your field and when i mention that people sometimes say oh i don't have the money to do that and i'm not i'm not talking about that i'm literally talking yeah. about instead of going on to sky news or twitter all yeah. day long stop and like you mentioned go on to a podcast yeah. that you think will actually feed your brain with useful information um, yes. So with that being said, what's your favorite podcast or what one of your favorite podcasts? Um, I love Jay Shetty at the moment. I love oh, all yeah. his different. Yeah, he's a bit. I'm reading his book as well at the moment. Yeah. I just think he's phenomenal. And I love the whole world of the monk. I love that. Yeah, the yeah. spiritual yeah. side and stuff. So I'm really intrigued by that. So I listen to that or I listen to Girl Boss uh, podcast. I also love Serial Killer podcasts. Oh, Not yes. that I want to become a serial killer or anything. I know I there's also loads of them now. There's loads of these yeah, serial killer podcasts. Of if you haven't watched uh, Night Stalker on Netflix. I, I have. Oh, people. my God. I loved it. I well, here's it. a crazy thing. One of my uh, previous guests, I mentioned this already uh, in a previous podcast, but one of my previous guests uh, on this series, Ed Solomon, who wrote uh, Bill Ooh. and Ted, and now you see me. He's also a good friend. Wait and hear this. He was actually a uh like uh, the night stalker robert ramirez ed solomon my friend turns out he was a suspect he was a suspect no. in the whole thing yeah 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 what? <laughs> he wasn't what? In, he wasn't in the documentary but all of a sudden now if you look online ed is associated with the night stalker and he tells the whole story in one of my previous episodes so people can check that out there um yeah. Susanna jackson it's been an absolute pleasure tell us where can people can find you, what you've got going on product-wise at the moment, and uh, where people can get it. 
Yeah, well, we're launching, we're getting ready to launch our foundation. People will be delighted to hear it. So they're going to get, that will be happening probably in the next month or two. So sue by SJ.com is my product page. And obviously on Instagram, so sue me underscore IE. And listen, sure, listen, if they're following, great. If not, come on over. And Keith, thank you so much. You're a gent. I really oh, enjoyed this chat. Yeah, same here. And thanks for having me. And listen, do us a favor though. Drop in some more tips into the Instagram posts about men, will you? And I we will. Need, we need more help now than the ladies. Listen, thank you again. Right. And I'll see you down thank the line. You. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks, Keith. Bye. Thanks. See you.